Let's now think about a population that has a standard deviation of 5. For example, maybe a certain class takes an exam, and the standard deviation of their exam scores turns out to be 5. If that's true, then a student in the class who has an exam score right at the mean would have a z-score of 0, like always. A student with an exam score that's 5 above the mean would have a z-score of plus 1, because that student would be one standard deviation above the mean. If the standard deviation of the class is 5, then a, a person who is 5 above the mean is one standard deviation above the mean. So that person has a z-score of plus 1. A student in the class with an exam score that's 5 below the mean would have a z-score of minus 1 because that student would be one standard deviation below the mean. If the standard deviation of the class is 5, then a student who is 5 below the mean is one standard deviation below the mean. A student in the class who has an exam score that's 10 above the mean would have a z-score of plus 2 because if the standard deviation of the class is 5, then a person who is 10 above the mean is two standard deviations above the mean. If you start at the mean of the class, and you go up by 5, and then you go up by 5 again, then you've gone up by two standard deviations of 5, and you've reached a student who's 10 above the mean. A student in the class who's 10 below the mean would be two standard deviations of 5 below the mean, so that student would have a z-score of minus 2. If you start at the mean of the class, and you go down by 5, and you go down by 5 again, you've gone two standard deviations below the mean, and you've reached a student who's 10 below the mean, and that student has a z-score of minus 2. That student has a z-score of minus 2 because that student has two standard deviations below the mean. A student who's 15 above the mean would have a z-score of plus 3 because that student would be three standard deviations above the mean. If you start at the mean of the class and you go up by 5, you go up by 5, and you go up by 5 again, then you've reached this student right here who's three standard deviations above the mean. A student in the class who has an exam score that's 15 below the mean would have a z-score of minus 3 because this student has three standard deviations below the mean. If you start at the mean, and you go down by 5, you go down by 5 again, and you go down by 5 one more time, then you've gone three standard deviations below the mean, and you've reached this student right here, who's 15 below the mean, with a z-score of minus 3. Now what if the standard deviation of the class wasn't 5? What if the standard deviation of the class was 10? Well, in that case, a person uh, in the class who's 10 above the mean would be one standard deviation above the mean, and then and that student would have a z-score of plus 1. And a student in the class who's 10 below the mean would be one standard deviation below the mean, and that student would have a z-score of minus 1. For example, if the mean of the class was 70, then a student who's right at 70 would have a z-score of 0 because a student who's right at the mean always has a z-score of 0. A person in the class with an exam score of 80, which is 10 above the mean, would have a z-score of plus 1. And a student in the class with an exam score of 60, which is 10 below the mean, would have a z-score of minus 1. Now, if the, if, the, if the class has a standard deviation of 10, then a student who is 20 above the mean would be two standard deviations above the mean, and that student would have a z-score of plus 2. Because if you start at the mean, and you go up by 10, and you go up by 10 again, you've gone up by 20. Also, a student in the class with an exam score 20 below the mean would have a z-score of minus 2, because if you start at the mean, 
and go down by 10, and go, by, go down by 10 again, you've gone 20 below the mean. Also, a person who is 30 above the mean would be 3 standard deviations above the mean, and, they, and this student would have a z-score of plus 3, and a student who is 30 below the mean would be 3 standard deviations below the mean, so they would have a z-score of minus 3. So basically, the, the z-score is just um, a multiple of the standard deviation. In other words, um, if you go up by one standard deviation above the mean, you reach a person with a z-score of plus 1. If you go up by one more standard deviation, you reach a person with a z-score of plus 2. And if you go up by one more standard deviation, you reach a person with a z-score of plus 3. If you start at the mean and you go down by one standard deviation, you reach a person with a z-score of minus 1. If you go down by one more standard deviation, you reach a person with a z-score of minus 2. And if you go down by even one more standard deviation, you reach a person with a z-score of minus 3. Let's now go through an example in which we um, find the z-scores of five specific people. We're now imagining that a certain population of people has a mean height of 60 and a standard deviation of 5. So if you, count, if you took all of the heights of everyone in the population and, and calculated the mean and standard deviation of, of those heights, you would get 60 and 5. Now we're, we're also imagining that we've taken a sample of this population 